But we can start if you want, or or you can get a coffee if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, actually, I'm Anne Murray. I have been in contact with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, we, but you hadn't participated in, in previous Hangouts, right? Yeah, I was I was um, in the first Art of the MOOC. Yeah, so I'm and you were in the part. course, but not in a Hangout, right? I participated in the Hangout before because the timing yeah. never really worked, so. <laughs> yeah. Just making sure that, you know, that I can connect names with, with faces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How is it going? <laughs> Everything it's going good. well this time? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, we're all coping with... Uh, Yes, changes in the world <laughs> other than that I know yeah. I, I I'm so sorry to hear what you went through um, uh, with um, with some a bit of harassment or something I guess you would say yeah uh, I saw post. yeah yeah hmm. I mean it's more I, I, I had gotten death threats before because of activism <laughs> but yeah. uh, my main concern there it's not it's, I don't think it's anyone who lives nearby and it's it just people get used to being aggressive in ways that should not be acceptable online, you know. Yeah. That yeah. is that it's the first time it happened with our Facebook page, and so I think it is indicative of the, the current atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I, I had never had to block someone, so, but this with this person, I mostly don't want other participants in the platform to feel intimidated or, you know, so that's why I had to block him. So. It's understandable, yeah. yeah. So, um, it must be very exciting, though, also, because at this time, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are really becoming more and more active in public art. I mean, now, yeah. it's uh, I've been watching the news, because uh, I'm in Spain now, so I'm back in Spain, but I was in the U.S. for the election, and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and now I've seen so many posts for even newspapers asking people to send in things uh, about art and what, you know, art in the next four years, mm -hmm. you know, more though. It's, uh, it's really a sad for the reason, but it's very exciting too, to actually, you know, see that people are motivated to do something more with art. So in public, in the public sphere, so. Well, it even uh, sort of too theater, right? The whole scandal with the Hamilton cast uh, <laughs> <laughs> has, has made yeah. clear that art does have a role to play. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it showed how powerful even just a simple comment can make, yeah. uh, can be, even um, even though it wasn't even a criticism, it was really a statement, and mm -hmm. that's so amazing, yeah. um, the reactionism that happens. So, um, I think what got them most upset was the booing, so maybe booing will be forbidden very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. yeah. yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Find all the people in the audience and have them, uh, you know, apologize? Why, why should the actors... There will be a registry for booers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll like that, you know? <laughs> uh, <could> be... <laughs> wow. and, uh, and so you're, you're in Barcelona, right, Anne? Um, right now, I'm not in Barcelona. I'm actually I'm at an artist residency in Camayera, which is just a small town. Uh, it's about two hours from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm here for a few weeks working on a project about identity, borders, nationalism. Uh, I've been working on it for about two years, actually, this project. So, yeah. uh -huh. but um, but yeah. So I'm just um, it's a it's a bit uh. Um, how shall I say, it's a very small town, so I'm in the countryside, really. Uh, there's only about 500 people here, so um, it's a change from Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. I else, uh, cool. I see someone else I think is trying to join. So what we can do is, so what we can do is starting at, at um, 3. Uh, we had several glitches with uh, basically uh, Google Plus, you know, shut down a big part of how they work, and now they're doing it with YouTube. So between that and things, we just uh, we didn't realize that was going on until like yesterday, because <laughs> we had oh, already, we had the routine down, and so that led to several issues. So so we oh, may have a small group, but uh, I see Romina. Can you hear us? Hello. Uh, let me see if she Romina. 
doesn't have a microphone. No. So I, there's nothing I can do about it, right? Mm -mm. No. She can hear you, though. Okay. Uh, Romina, so if you want to join the conversation, we can see that you're here. Uh, if you're just watching, that's OK. But if you wanted to, to talk, maybe just make sure your mic is on, because we don't, we don't have, we just have your icon, but not, we don't see your video or your, or your audio feed. Uh, OK. It looks like she wrote a message that says that she doesn't have a microphone. Yeah, OK. I, I just saw it, yeah. Uh, OK, cool. Well, thanks, uh, Romina. So you can just send us uh, texts, and we will make it part of the conversation. Uh, but if you also just want to listen in, um, I think, um, Anne, if you're OK with this, what we could do is, since basically it's almost 3 o'clock, okay. uh, we could start the conversation focusing a little bit on, on kind of, so I'll just say hello, and then we can start with what you've been doing, like, and kind of, I'll introduce you, and then if other people join, they can start up. Like the the whole idea of these hangouts is we've done different in the series. So some of them were more focused on a particular place and uh -huh. uh, what people wanted to do in those places. But I think this this series is more about uh, past or current art of the MOOC learners and or people in the in our community who who are able to share about their work specifically. You know, so it's great. Okay. To have you. Um, nice. Okay. So should we start? Are you? you yeah, sure. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Um, so so you know, uh, hi, everyone. If you're just joining, it's now 3 o'clock. And so I'm Pedro Lash. And uh, this is uh, the first uh, Google Hangout we, we are doing since we relaunched uh, both courses of The Art of the MOOC, and not just in English, but also in Spanish versions. So if you join us, um, you can uh, join us either by just listening in or watching, or also actually uh, uh, joining the conversation. Um, if you want to just send comments to, like Romina is joining us from Buenos Aires, uh, you can just text in in the box, and we'll be seeing the comments here. And you can also write in English or in Spanish. I can read them in Spanish. But we have uh, already joining us uh, Anne Murray. And Anne um, you know, was, was one of our uh, learners who actually completed the course last year, right, in and, and the first yes. edition, and yes. did a lot of great projects. And she's been living in Spain, but also was in the US recently. So and uh, perhaps you can tell us like what, how what you're doing now connects to what you were doing during the MOOC and, and where you're working. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, for one thing, it was really a very um, motivating to be part of the Art of the MOOC. I, I didn't really realize how much uh, it would influence me. Um, but I, I've um, started to do uh, this curatorial project called Cloud Conversations. And this project is bringing together artists from different parts of the world who I see some connections between their works. And, um, and the, the themes are themes of global issues such as uh, xenophobia, racism, sexism, um, Islamophobia, you know, religious in intolerance. And, um, and so I've started this project. And um, we've done so far uh, three conversations. Um, from different parts of the planet, uh, from New York to London, um, and uh, also from um, an artist who was in Mumbai, another one in, uh, who was also in London for the second conversation, an artist in New York. Um, so basically, uh, the, the artists are from different parts of the world. Um, they're interested in these themes. They're, they're working in different disciplines as well. Um, some are working with sculpture, painting, performance. Uh, we have uh, writers. Um, so they're uh, video artists, uh, photographers. And, um, and what I'm trying to do is stimulate their work and help them to feel bolstered uh, in the kind of work that they're doing. Um, it's becoming more and more of a political project, obviously, in the current uh, episodes of what's happening in the U.S. Uh, has really spurred on these conversations. And, and hopefully, um, we, we've got more projects to come. Uh, nothing's firm right now, but um, probably there will be a cloud conversation that will happen in India, where we'll do a sculpture project in the spring. And uh, I'll do with a, uh, this project with another with a Serbian artist, mm -hmm. and um, we'll do a conversation from there, from Mumbai or from Goa. 
And um, so it's continuing, and uh, and it's uh, I'm a video artist myself, also a poet. So I've combined video and poetry, and so it's video poetry, and also I do photography. Okay. And uh, so I have for the last two years, I've been doing a project that's relating um, identity and so. Um, that's how I fit into this project uh, as far as the themes, like looking at how, where do we find and center ourselves and how do we relate to society because of these um, uh, external and internal uh, things. So I've been traveling to a lot of different countries. I spent a, a great deal of time in Spain, but also to Serbia, to um, Hungary, to Macedonia, to Iceland, um, Turkey. I did quite a few projects in Turkey. Um, etc. There are several places in Europe I've been to, to Germany as well, mm -hmm. and uh, that's essentially what I've been working on. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I don't know if you, are you seeing our, our group chat next to the screen? Um, yes, I see it. Because, I see. Well, the other thing we can start doing as we have these conversations is adding links and things like that. So oh, great. Um, if you, okay. is, there, is there a URL people can visit for yes, the cloud conversation? Yes. Right. And we have some of the conversations have been recorded. Um, so there's video. Um, and uh, also, if you just uh, want to listen to it, you can listen. There's the different artists. And uh, you can look up each of the artists involved in the project um, and go to their own web pages. So there's like a small explanation page for each artist. Uh, I think now it's up to 15 artists that are involved in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, they're from different disciplines and different parts of the world. Great. And that's kind of perfect. I mean, one of the things that I was hoping, and also I know that's the case with Nato Thompson, as we were designing and, and putting together the, the original version of The Art of the MOOC and then adapting it, was that we knew there were many artists interested in these types of practices, but also yeah. curators and critics. But our one something we wanted to directly fight against is this notion that with uh, technology and specifically online education that everybody's sitting in front of their computer and are working by themselves you know so we yeah. were trying with especially with the weekly projects we were trying to come up with structures and, and incentives that would make people work locally but also connect with others rather than just work yeah. on their own and I, I, what I was very happy to see as the as the MOOC has evolved is how many of our, especially our core community, people who continue throughout the process, how many of you, and this is obviously the case uh, with your project, are not just artists and, and practitioners and theorists, but also facilitators, you know, like how you, you are yourself a node of like a lot of other people. And so that's been uh, really great to see. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, it's very think, motivating having participated in, in Art of the MOOC. I mean, it really um, made me see how many different parallels are happening in different parts of the world and really the impact art can have in so many different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think somebody <laughs> just joined. Uh, so Megan, uh, we see, a, we see a, a couch right now. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, sorry, I have to answer. No, it's my all right. Part. It's actually it's, it's the beauty of the media. <laughs> you get to be in people's. <laughs> so um, welcome. I don't know if if, if uh, we're just starting the conversation, and Anne was telling us about cloud conversations. This a really interesting series she she has organized. Um, what do you, is there something you want to share with us, Megan, as you join? Also, uh, Romina is jo is listening in and 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 perhaps sending texts from Buenos Aires, but but. Uh, I don't know if there's something specific, Megan, that you wanted to tell us. No, or... I was just curious to see what you all were talking about, and so that's why I logged in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just and, curious. And uh, are you are you currently enrolled in the in the Art of the MOOC, or where are you? Or yeah, I just started the second week of the Art and Activism, okay. and I haven't yet started the Pedagogy one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, great. And uh, are you? What's your last name? In feud? I mean, you don't have to say it if you prefer not to. But, uh, it's Price. Price. Okay. Great. Yeah. It's 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 it would seem like an irresponsible uh, question if this was a regular course, right? Like my in my Duke courses, I have twelve to twenty students, so it would be very bad if I was asking you what your last. Name. <laughs> but of course, I think as you all know, and anybody who's taking the MOOC, that's it's not a it's not a 
course even in in and it's it's we we're, we call these MOOCs courses because that's how they were created. But I think of them more as uh, global communities or kind of uh, conferences of sorts that we're all joining. You know that where we created some materials, but then it keeps evolving and and even the, to me the concept of student and learner sometimes doesn't make sense. I think of it more as all of us contributed something, you know, to, to the conversation. So so what brought you to to it, uh, Megan? Like what uh, it sounds so the activism, but is there something specific about um I think a lot of a lot of my previous work has been in acad in uh academics. I've been in education for the last 17 years, and I worked uh, primarily in alternative education with kids and people that have had a lot of challenges. And after that, I was, I decided not to, I took a, like a leave for my work, and I decided not to do that anymore. And as I was looking for what the next thing would be in my career, um, I was trying to find those things that really brought me energy and that I was really called to do. And um, it's something in the field of arts. Um, I'm not an artist myself, but I want to find some way that I can uh, support art and artists because um, it really has... Uh, helped bring, I think, to my life a, a larger perspective. And I want to find some way to incorporate that into either the work that I've done in the past or the work that I'm going to do in the future. Um, so I'm trying to uh, educate myself in the most direct way to do that. So that's sort of a long yeah. <laughs> explanation yeah. to your question. But yeah, that's what brought me to this course. And where are you located? Are you located in the US or US? Or? Um, no, I, I'm actually living in France right now. I've lived here for the past year when I took a leave from my work from the Bay Area in, in California. And um, when I took a leave, when I took my sabbatical, I moved here, and we've decided to stay for as long as we can. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, well, hopefully, well, hopefully, your election is your election way. way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get to vote here, yeah. but <laughs> I voted there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the, the interesting the, things, interesting things, things, I don't know, there's an echo, there's an echo, could, 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 maybe it's your, maybe it's anybody your, have, does anybody have, have their, yeah, I hear the, yeah, yeah. I hear the echo. Do, do you all hear the echo? Hear the echo? That's, that's, uh, mm -hmm. it's not any better, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do, if, you know, something we, something we should all do is uh, either use headphones or if you can mute the, 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 uh, your microphone when you're not, when you're speaking. Because I think that's what's creating it. Let me grab some headphones. Yeah. Or, I mean, if, if you have an easy mute button, that usually solves it. Solve it. <laughs> um, um, and, and if you... If you how how one question one I wanted to ask you know, so so minimize the echo minimize the echo will be less echo with your mic. I wanted I to wanted ask, ask you like how, how in the previous meetings we, we had we were, we were focusing on particular places, places like Iran, Iran, you know, and, you know Tehran, but also Toronto, in, in the UK. Um, so, so then, um, Pedro, Pedro, I, yes, yes. There's so much echo. Let me see if I can get over the mic. Sure. Hold on one second. <sighs> Is that better, Megan? I wasn't hearing any echo, but I hope it makes it better for everyone. Yeah, else. that's. <laughs> I think I think it was the the mic. Uh, oh, okay. And, I think yeah. it was the mic in on on Megan's uh, computer. Oh, uh, okay. All so right. it should be fine, right? Because I don't think I don't hear it anymore. Do you hear it? No, I don't either. Um, okay. Sorry about that. So, yeah, you that's all right. So one right. one question that I that I wanted to ask you both because it's uh, relevant as we we already are. If you think, especially if you think of Amina being in Buenos Aires and you two being in different countries and us sitting here 
in North Carolina. Uh, one of the issues that that came up quite deliberately, but also uh, is really important to think about, is in the other hangouts we were doing over the summer, we were focusing since we had a bit of a of a gap between restructuring the course for the new platform. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to lose the conversation, so we created we had a few hangouts that were more focused on thinking about place, you know, like doing work concretely in a particular town. Mm -hmm. And and so the people who were invited to join Hangouts were all in one particular place. So we did one in Iran, you know, uh, because I was very happily surprised when we launched the move that there were all these great artists and thinkers and activists doing work in Tehran, you know. And, uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so we did one in Tehran. We did one in in uh, in the UK, uh, and we did one in in Toronto. But even in those, like one question that came up is like those of us who are moving internationally or who want to connect to smaller places that are always left out of the picture, you know? What yeah. kind of technological platforms do we use, right? Like in the case of this Google Hangout, but also the MOOC itself, to stay in touch with each other. So that's something I wanted to ask you specifically. And like with the cloud conversations, how do you keep these 15 people in touch with each other? And how do they stay in touch with groups that they're in dialogue? And how, how, what, are the what have you figured out as the best means to do that? Um, well, I don't know if I found the best way. I mean, so far, because it's a really small group, we mostly just use Facebook. And um, and it's, it's, it's gradual, because we've only done three of these major conversations that we did um, uh, also through Flux Factory, in connection with Flux Factory, and through Worldwide Apartment and Studio Biennial. So uh, we're just getting started. So. I'm mostly Facebook because everybody uses Facebook, and uh, although it um, it isn't always perfect, because for instance, uh, one of our participants, actually two of our participants, are from Turkey, and most recently uh, they had everything cut off from uh, YouTube, um, Facebook, and even the internet for a short time. So um, you know, sometimes you have to use Skype. Uh, that also can work because um, that's li less likely to go down. Uh, you can use messaging that way. So it gets complicated because of these um, limitations, the sanctions that are in different countries. Um, and uh, well, one hopes that that's not going to happen in the US, but um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> limitations of communication. But um, but uh, yeah, mostly um, through through Facebook, through email. Yeah, that's the biggest the, way. the reason I also ask is because it was from the very beginning when we launched the project, it was central to stage the idea of staging international conversations, right? Um, but especially yeah. now, we're at one of the things we knew was potentially coming, but now we know for a fact is just how it works, is that when we relaunched the MOOC uh, to the on-demand platform in Coursera, which uh -huh. basically students take the course in their own pacing, Generally, people love that, and because it lets you a lot of uh, one of the exciting things about MOOCs is that people in different age groups take them, but also people have jobs. It basically, mm -hmm. you can you can educate yourself, right? And, and, yeah. and, and the more adaptable mm -hmm. the medium, the better for for people who are trying to do that. Yeah. The one thing that we learned, which is a negative outcome, is that the forums, like our forums, were quite active in the first edition, uh, which was or in yes. session based where everybody was taking the same materials at the same time. And the forums are now very inactive, you know, uh, inside of Coursera. Okay. And so I'm specifically okay. also hmm. trying to think what together with uh, learners, you know, what the best ways are for us to communicate outside of those, you know, uh, forums since, since people are off sync. And so hopefully through once yeah. like every couple of weeks having a hangout that will help. But ultimately you can't do a hangout with, you know, it, it's still different in the forums. Sometimes hundreds. you have like <laughs> hundreds of people yeah. commenting on an issue, you know. Yeah. And so um, yeah. I, I was curious if you had encountered um, other discussion yeah. formats that allow rich exchange mm. that doesn't get taken over by trolls or. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know it is difficult. I mean, and also even Facebook. Like for instance, I lived in China for three years, and and um, you can't really use uh, Facebook unless you have a virtual network provider there. So so then that limits. You know, mostly it would be uh, people who are foreign nationals living in China and not necessarily Chinese participants. 
Um, so then you lose that uh, element. So uh, I'm not sure. I don't really have a suggestion. Um, but if I think of one, I will I will email it to you. I, I guess um, mostly um, creating some kind of chat chat space is good, but um, I don't have a good suggestion, sorry. <laughs> well, and, and, I mean, yeah. an, another way to think of it is, and that's the approach that I've been trying to take, is to think of us all as part of yeah. multi-layered communities that where some of us are in mm -hmm. touch with others in that other community, right? And so, for yeah. example, yeah. you told us about cloud conversations, but uh, like Megan, I'm curious with you in terms of your background in education, you know, like, and, and your your interest in art, like, which which communities you 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 are part of in terms of these discussions, like, uh, whether it's in France or somewhere else, are you are you actively involved in in? I'm not actively involved in much here, because um, primarily because the level of my French isn't. I'm not at the level where I can communicate in a way in the same way that I can in English. Uh -huh. <laughs> So um, while I do seek out, uh, I'm really close to Bilbao where I live right now. Mm -hmm. And so I often uh, go down to the museum there, the Guggenheim. And I just, uh, you know, I try to just put myself in, in situations or in places where I'm surrounded by opportunities to interact with other people, but um, the language barrier makes it kind of difficult for me mm -hmm. to do that. And in terms of your previous time in the U.S., have you stayed in touch with people engaged in education, uh, or not so much? Uh, let, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I stay in touch with some former teacher friends that um, through Facebook. But I'm really, uh, I mean, I read, I've reached a really high level of burnout. The the work I was doing, I was working in prisons with. Um, with students that were incarcerated and in oh. alternative education environments where kids were um, expelled from their regular traditional high school path. And um, it, so I just, I did that for so many years that I, I got a little disillusioned by the, um, the, you know, the overall structure of it. And, and so I haven't, um, spent much time thinking about it, uh, thinking about that part of my career as I'm looking forward to, you know, what I'm going to be doing next. Mm -hmm. Because I really, for me to like let go, I had to let go of that before I could sort of see what else was out there in front of me because I spent so much time immersed in that environment that it was hard for me to see any other options. So I really had to like, you know, stop doing research and stop reading about education and really try to change my focus or you know, open myself up to other options that were out there. Yeah. And it's, it's maybe, it sounds like it, it may not be the right thing for you at this moment in time, but you know, one of the <laughs> things that I think we're all hoping to build over the years with our wiki, you know, as is this kind of, growing commons of sorts, like a much more public face to what is, because we, inside of Coursera, everything, you have to be registered, you know, and then it's, it's a more controlled environment, right? But for example, in the wiki, like there are a, a lot of artists that we were considering, uh, we included a few, but not, not, not so many who have done work, say, say in prisons, you know, or with uh, uh, radical education and, and detention centers and so on. And, uh, and this is the kind of thing that, for example, since the wiki is run entirely by participants and you can post anything you want, you know, and there's, uh, it's, it's some, it, to some extent has already started where people start, imagine somebody creates an entry of like, you know, socially engaged art in prisons, you know, mm -hmm. that could soon grow into a whole, either a very large entry that is almost Wikipedia style or, or something that is more nonlinear where people, different people have connected contributions to what they know about. Like uh, there's a great group, for example, called La Yesca, you know, like a Mexican art collective that has done amazing work in, in prisons. And so uh, that's where I'm, I'm hoping that over the years, the wiki will grow into this um, uh, pretty pretty rich resource, you know. Um, how, how has that um, been going? I mean, I, um, uh, I don't remember, I guess we had that before for the first art of the MOOC and mm -hmm. I, I don't think I realized I could I, I think I forgot about it actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I um I've been pretty busy this year, but um yeah, yeah I, I sort of uh 
um, I remember at first I didn't know how to find my way around it. And then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it seemed like everybody else kind of knew what was going on before I did. But, um, but um, can one go back to being involved with that now? Or? Yeah, of course. And basically, uh -huh. we were quite happily surprised that uh, yeah. before we had even finished the, the, all, the, all the weeks of the first edition of the course, yeah. there were all, already over 1,000 people who had started wow. accounts in the wiki, which means that potentially, imagine yeah. if, if every person posted something once yeah. a month, you would have a thousand. Yeah, but that's amazing. But as is normal with these platforms, yeah. what happens is that people start an account and then our everyday lives take over, you know, and, and you become Yes, they do. <laughs> and yeah. so I think that's fairly normal. Uh, it, ultimately, it's also the trick, which um, I, I personally believe in creating comments that are public, you know, uh, as much as we can. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And so you could have said, well, why, why don't you just put, post everything directly in Wikipedia and use the MOOC to, to encourage people to start Wikipedia entries on these topics and so on. Mm. And oh, okay. Yeah. In principle, I'm, I'm actually very interested in that. I think we should, we, we, there's, mm -hmm. It's just like we have roads and some towns have free Wi-Fi, you know, like there, yeah, I think yeah. this type of information should be out there, right? And we should all have access to yeah. it. Um, yeah. But one of the reasons why we didn't want to start out it, I like that, and while eventually that may be the ultimate goal, right? Of, of the, for example, if there's a few amazing entries that people have worked on and are very thoroughly researched and, and, and helpful, then we could actually begin adding those to Wikipedia. But the issue is that a lot of people that I've worked with over the years, I've noticed that they're a bit uh, intimidated by all the formats and, and what you uh, need to yeah. know. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so while edited ones have been quite successful, for example, uh, last year, I, I hope to do it this year. Last year, we almost got it together for one of the the people enrolled in the MOOC was was one of the organizers of the feminist edit-a-thon, which is like every year or during Women's Day, you know, uh, people are cr across the world and make sure to create hundreds, if not thousands, of entries on women artists, wow, women intellectuals, great, you know, women yeah. politicians. And and you when these edit events happen, even people who feel intimidated by the interface get helped, you know? And, yeah, that's great. Um, oh. And so I think that kind of hopefully wow. the wiki is just kind of one a bridge into that form of production. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, but yeah. but we're we're kind of I, right now, the, the wiki is so, like, once you create your account, you can post anything. You can post a reflection. You can post some links for people. Mm -hmm. You can post a conversation that you had, say, one of the cloud conversations. And then it could become like a portal yeah. to use the, the, the traffic that yeah. you have so that it, people go to whatever yeah. you care about. Uh, and so we wanted to keep it very so completely open like that, which is not the case with yeah. Wikipedia, you know, where you have to create more like an encyclopedic type of entry. Um, yeah, it's true. I think it's interesting that um, that there's some um, parallels actually between uh, things that I've done in the past and and Megan. I was just typing into the mm -hmm. into the comments here. Um, Megan, I I worked with incarcerated teens uh, in California, um, in Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. uh, for a company, it's um, it's called the Unusual Suspects Theater Company, and they. Um, they basically do these programs where they teach the, the, the kids how to act and they write their own play and they put on performances uh, mm -hmm. in the prisons. And uh, I used to be the costume designer. Oh, um, <laughs> so, and it was really, for me, it was really touching to see, um, you know, even though um, these kids uh, had been, you know, imprisoned, uh, how much they were still like kids when you got um, around the uh, negative aspects of having to um, make these kind of bravado uh, efforts that they do to look cool in front of their friends or to be tough enough. And then you find out really they're, they're still pretty young inside and very much like kids, like the kind of things that they wanted to write about and perform and like one of them was like based in Candyland and you're thinking wow okay I didn't really think of them doing that but um, and it was really a very uh, moving um, experience to work for that company and then also I worked in alternative education I worked for a school it's called School One in Rhode Island uh, where they always incorporate art in all of the lessons 
and uh, and it's a great alternative school and it's it's a high school and uh, it's for students that um, often have been expelled from the regular system or they have some different kinds of learning disabilities. Basically, they don't fit into the average kind of classroom environment in public school and, uh, and they end up at the school and it's really interesting what happens. They, um, being in a smaller classroom situation where they get more individualized attention and when they get to express themselves more through art, um, they really blossom and uh, yeah, worked there for about six years. So it was interesting. Wow. Uh, we have these things in common. <laughs> that sounds like a great program. It's yeah. The thing is, is that a, a lot of the time the the arts are um, they're not pro, you know they're not provided for by the state program. I mean, the, it's, mm -hmm. it's usually yeah. a requirement that they take an art class in order to graduate, mm -hmm. but um, it's not like the highest priority. So what happens ends up happening is that really great programs get to come in from outside. And that sounds like a really cool one that you were involved with, with the, uh, yeah, with the playwriting. That's yeah, awesome. it was really great. I mean, they really, they got, um, well, while I was there, I mean, it was several years ago that I was there, but they got a coming up taller award. Um, and one of the um, one of the participants who was actually still on probation went to the White House to receive the award. So it was really a big, big thing. Like they try to continue even after uh, they do a program because the programs are only eight to twelve weeks. But they try to follow up with the the kids and keep a, a contact with them in the future so that they have some kind of. Um, connection, continued connection, and sometimes they hire them to be teaching artists as well in the That's program, awesome. teaching like actors and and uh, yeah, so it's um, it's a good program, and I, I you know I think since that time they've grown a lot, but um, it's, it's another way to bring art into the know, community. Yeah. To kind of, I, I also want to make sure to, to uh, Romina just wrote that she's a volunteer in a community workshop. And she's planning for next year a series of activities for women, with women, but about being women in history and uh, in, in, incorporating some art. And so in, in regards to that, I mean, sometimes also what has happened with the MOOC is that people start the first few weeks, but then because of everyday life cannot finish or complete it. Yeah. Or, and so um, I want to make sure that as we're having very specific conversations in these hangouts, like uh, that I can point to parts that even if you have to skip some weeks, you can go straight to that lecture. And yeah. so this issue for me as an artist, I've been very influenced by feminism and by women artists mm -hmm. who've been doing uh, actually literally work about imprisonment, like Suzanne Lacey is one of our guest presenters. Uh, so while her, her um, interview or presentation is more about uh, experimental pedagogy, you know, which is uh -huh. something she's done a lot, in her in her artwork, she's also addressed this issue uh, on of, of of prisons and policing and so on. Uh, but uh, Romina, like, also, uh, I want to make sure you 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 know, depending on what week you're in in the course, if you're taking it, uh, there's some amazing artists that we were able to to talk to, not just covering the lectures, but actually have them talk with us about uh, this this type of work. And so, of course, Tania Bruguera is a clear example, quite quite well-known Cuban artist who's been um, uh, doing a very interesting work in the last few decades. Uh, also, Regina Galindo, who is uh, actually the only artist that I know of who's been in the Venice Biennial for four times. <laughs> and wow. she's basically my age. Uh, she's incredible, uh, very powerful and courageous performance artist. And- uh, what, what is she, her last name? Regina Galindo, G-A-L-I-N-D-O. And it's one of those inequities of the art world, okay. right? Like if, if uh, Regina is clearly recognized, for you to be in the Venice Biennial four times, you have to be recognized, you, you know, the art. Yeah. The, but, huh. but, but that doesn't mean that uh, she is the, the, the big selling art star, you know, that, that she is an art star of that, of, of, of that circuit, right? Of people who do their research and who know who's doing really mm. bold and interesting and new things, right? But often, if a woman artist from Guatemala, you know, even if she yeah. is represented four times in the Venice Biennial, people often still don't know her name when they know uh, many U.S. or European artists whose work is actually mm -hmm. okay, you know. But it's uh, yeah. so I feel like that's one of the things we have to also make sure that we keep bringing up names that that uh, people who are 
Um, and but there's other like in terms of um, both uh, Megan and and and, and Romeo, there's there's the there's the idea of art, but there's also the idea of just doing social action, right? That doesn't always have to be art. And Rebecca mm -hmm. Gombert is one of my favorite um, uh, presenters we've had, and she I don't know if you've heard of this Women on Waves uh, project. She talks about it in that in her guest presentation, but basically for years now she's been doing these. Um, uh, reproductive rights clinics, you know, in boats. Like she has this boat that is a clinic, and she gets, she stays within international water, so there's nothing illegal about it. And then people who, women who need uh, help or need abortions or need to, to see a doctor in countries where it's not allowed, they basically get on the boat. They get a little raft that wow. takes them to the boat, and then. And then they come back, you know, so that way they never broke the law in their in their country. And right now, uh, Rebecca with her team is doing something. <laughs> she loves grabbing like things that are catching people's attention. And she actually is a trained physician as well as a trained artist. After studying wow. uh, okay. medicine, you realized art had all these crazy, interesting techniques and strategies and so on. So she actually enrolled in an MFA program and did an MFA after wow. her her physician degree. And so in her work, you see this balance, right? Really creative approaches that you know, keep people focusing on, on, on that. So if you just go, go to the website, Women on Wave, you'll see uh, these amazing resources for reproductive rights wow. worldwide, which countries do not you know, uh, support women with this, and, and so on. But the, the one she's working on now is uh, called Women on Drones, uh, where they basically, they're flying pills uh, into, into uh, Poland and into other places. <laughs> oh, wow. Using drones. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. So again, she's, she's taking a technology that we associate with kind of the opposite side of the political spectrum, you know? And yeah. yeah. Kind of, so, so while the work is about reproductive rights, it also is about drone technology, and, and it kind of make, makes us have more substantial, deeper conversations about that stuff, right? And um, so, so Romina, if you, I don't know which week you're in, you could, you may want to make sure to look at those those couple of artists. Uh, are there are there other uh, artists that you you can think of, or or social projects you've stumbled upon that uh, kind of focus on this idea of of women in history and, the, and their role in history? Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, no, I, I can't think of anything uh, 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 on the spot. Um, uh, that's really interesting because, I mean, um, <laughs> it's an important topic. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I need to I do mean, something. Movie, yeah. We covered in a few of the modules, yeah. so for example, in the, even in the lectures, like Woman House, which yeah. was this really important intervention in California, right, with many of the most important feminist artists of that decade in, in uh, the yeah, 60s I and 70s. Yeah, yeah. So if you kind of follow the the paths of these different artists. There's been great shows done recently on, on the uh, like WAC was a really important show on the history of feminist art and so on. But 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 it's also for me it's really great to see what younger or either younger women or women who kind of intentionally left the mainstream because they were critical of certain aspects of the mainstreaming yeah. of say yeah. feminism in art. What they're doing now, you know, like it's. Uh, Sometimes it's a bit harder to find, you know. Um, it's easy to find what Judy Chicago is doing, or what yeah, you know, of course, yeah. is doing, you know. But, but, yeah. uh, but, and that work still retains its radical nature to some extent. Yeah. But it also, yeah. of course, loses an edge once you show it at the National Gallery. Like Barbara Kruger has a big show now at the at the National yeah. Gallery. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah, like there's also, a lot, so much out there to discover that. Um, it's, I feel like it's a gift, really, in a way, that there's so many different, like you've just mentioned three or four different things that I've never heard of before. And when I look into them, I'm going to be exposed to all of this really inspirational and amazing work that's just going to blow my mind. I mean, I know that that's probably what's going to happen for me. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just really, I'm grateful that I'm even getting to have this opportunity to talk so intimately with these you know the three of us and these other three people that are mm -hmm. not talking with us, but it, I really appreciate it. So mm -hmm. thanks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I, I just, think it's that's the joy of building communities, right? That. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm somebody just joined. Mickey, can you hear us? I think Hi. Mickey may be staging a performative thing because we see a chair. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I, <laughs> so, once if you can, can you can you hear us okay, Mickey? Yes, yes. Okay. So I don't know if you wanted to join the conversation or mostly listening in, but. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't have so much to say. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, if you want to join in at any point, just just. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just I also make uh, uh, Romina added some comments in the chat, and she was talking about uh, women in Argentina who are organizing through a movement called Ni Una Menos, and which is about femi uh, femicides. Um, and of course, this is uh, one of the tragic realities that so many of the, we would hope that at this time in history, the feminist movements around the world can focus on, on things like equal pay, which of course they have been doing. And in Iceland, there were interesting activities like that, right? With pe mm -hmm. women leaving 17% yeah. earlier from work because they were getting paid 17% less. That was a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's very yeah, smart. Really, yeah. They did the same thing. No. The sad reality is that in so many parts of the world, we're still dealing with murder as the, as the top, like basically the extreme violence against uh, women. So in the case of the United States, um, you know, uh, uh, reservations, Native American reservations, have one of the highest incidences of, of violence, extreme violence against women. And the majority of that violence is actually perpetrated by outsiders from the reservation. But there's no wow. there's no uh, judicial or legal tool for the inhabitants of these reservations to prosecute someone outside of the reservation. Wow! And That's so, incredible. so there's it's this kind of systematic injustice, right? Uh, just like the with the infamous uh, murders in in the border between Mexico and and uh in the u.s right uh, which rose mm -hmm. so much it's it's almost like a system of punishment with women who finally become lower middle class or working class in the sense that they work in the maquiladoras mm -hmm. you know and then all of a sudden they're exposed to this incredible backlash of violence against them you know um mm -hmm. so um romina if you're if you're hearing us i mean maybe if you have any anything you want to share in terms of like exciting or inspiring strategies that Niuna Menos has been using. Maybe you can kind of uh, type some in there. But but again, I, I think that's where we can also all use the wiki to share stuff with each other that you did not find in the in the mm -hmm. MOOC. You know, uh, one of the really difficult things about teaching, uh, which I, in the, we have several people already in the conversation who have taught, so I don't need to tell you that, but if anybody is watching is that at least in my experience, the hardest thing is not what to put in a class. It's what, how do you exclude things? Like there's so many things you yeah. want to be teaching, but you can't have a three hour <laughs> lecture, you know, especially yeah. online, you know, the lectures have to be very yeah. short, you know? And so we, actually most of the most difficult decisions that we made, NATO and I, and also the team that produced the move was leaving out things that we still feel should be included. And that's where I feel like the wiki can help us build that. So, for example, things like Ni Una Menos and other, uh, like Mujeres de Juarez, so many of the interesting movements that have uh, grown out of this opposition to the violence against women, you know, should be represented. Um, and um, it's... Um, yeah, I'm going to look that I mean, up. Of I course, mean, I think yeah, it's, go, oh, I was just going to say... It's one of the things that with the elections, we, like, like with racism, right? Uh, and religious freedom, these are some of the things that we thought were almost behind us, but we have been proven so wrong. <laughs> um, and now it's time to almost start yeah. as if we were 30 years ago. You know, like we have to assume that we're. Yeah. We're, uh, yeah. Start, to start from scratch. Uh, yeah, it's horrifying, actually. <laughs> I also, I, I was living under this kind of mystique that uh, things were a lot further along, but in fact, they weren't. I guess this. Uh, the racism had been growing during this last eight years uh, as a reactionary um, kind of to the situation of people not accepting having an African-American president or something. I, I don't really know. It just seems like the, those conflicts that were underneath have bubbled up and it's... Uh, well, and what's, what's really know, to me uh, very, very troubling mm -hmm. is that the 
the racism against um, you know uh, an African American candidate was kept under you know it was it did not come out during the presidential campaigns. It come, no, came out not, after, yeah. you know, with the with the mm. healthcare debate and so on. That's when you saw most of the larger mm. aggressive statements. But with uh, with the recent campaign, you saw the misogyny pervade everything, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so to some extent, we're even more behind. <laughs> when yeah. It comes to yeah. Position and rights, and I, I think that I agree with you. Oh. Yeah, I agree. That's been um, that's been uh, uh, unfortunately very depressing. Uh, I I'm part of that Facebook group, Pantsuit Nation. Are you part of that group? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing um, to realize that women are at the very bottom of the of the pile, like the very lowest <laughs> denominator. <laughs> uh, well, and they're not even, technically a minority, right? So, you know, with other yeah. the people keep excusing <laughs> by saying, oh, we, you know, minorities are minorities, so they, why should they have the voice of a majority? But yeah. with women, you know, it's not, even that argument um, can't be. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I agree. I think this is something that needs to be addressed more and more in art. And, it, and it's interesting you asked that question about, you know, can you think of artists that are really dealing with these issues? And uh, honestly, I, I really didn't think of anyone currently who, you know, I've been uh, aware of that I found, um, you know, obviously uh, remarked upon enough to like keep it in my mind, which is unfortunate. And um, well, it's well, telling. One, one yeah. issue that I think you may all find quite useful and we didn't, um, uh, uh, we, we used it in some references, but, but it wasn't like, is uh, have you ever looked into Actipedia? No, no. Actipedia uh -uh, is kind of like down. the Wikipedia of activism. You know, it was it was ah, founded no. with that idea, and so it was um, it was started by this, this great group of like Stephen Duncan is part of it, but like mm. it's a collective that that does mm. research, but also they. Yeah, some of the yes men are included in this group, and and it, mm. the the logic of Wikipedia is that it's very easy to create an entry, but there's a very specific format, and okay. most of the entries are calls for activism or documentation of activist actions. You know, mm. Mm. and for the first few years, they I think they've they've become, you know, like with it, maintaining these platforms can be incredibly high, like time consuming and. Yeah, resources. <laughs> so even yeah. though in the last year or two you see less activity there, maybe it will start again with the given situation. But um, yeah. if you look at the, they have a couple of like hundreds and hundreds of entries. So and you can search by kind of topic, like women's mm -hmm. rights, you know. But you can also search by region, and so it's there's a lot of inspiring examples there of the kind of current work that people are doing. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, Thank you. I mean, for it is striking that. Yeah. I mean, it's striking that. Uh, like a nominated attorney general can be known for saying things like, you know, grabbing women by the crotch is not harassment. It's it's really the fact that that is technically a possibility is just uh, it's pretty. Uh, I don't even know where. Well, right. if, <laughs> if you if you put it the other way around, and a woman was grabbing a man, I think that people would, you know, be like, "That's not appropriate." You know, I think uh, it would be so different. The reaction would be like, "Hey, that's not right," and yeah. like these kind of things. You know, there's the bias in in different ways. If you put it, turn it around in the perspective of a man, you know, something happening to them, then, you know, there would be kind of a different uproar uh, outcry about it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyway, I mean, I, I guess, you know, now is going to be the time for women to really take more initiative to be outspoken about these issues and not let things slide, you know, when they're, and that was one of the things I read an article about, you know, why did so many uneducated white women vote um, for Trump? And, you know, you really wonder, uh, and uh, and in fact, it was saying like because they're so used to these kind of misogynistic comments mm -hmm. in their everyday life that they just accept it as not really being that big of a deal, and uh, <laughs> and that's something that needs to change. So uh, unfortunately, if somebody, an attorney general, is saying like, oh, this is you know not really sexual harassment or not considered that way, then that 
doesn't really support the women who are trying to make um, make this stop happening. And uh, well, well, and yeah. it's also it's about well, learning well. and remembering why certain things were not okay for the last few decades, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I don't think I think it would be completely unfair to expect that everyone should like a candidate because she's a woman. That's not what we're saying, right? But no, if you just no, that's or dislike that candidate, you should express it in vo in forms that actually reflect either the policies that the person represents, yeah. you know, and so on. And it's the same on race, right? Like the, 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 the grabbing of of these things that we thought we had left behind, you know, like uh, yeah. uh, is is I think what's what's truly hopefully we can still <laughs> uh, prevent that becoming the from becoming the new normal, right? Where Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's hope. I'm um, still like uh, reeling from it in a way. Like I had to <clears throat> not be on Facebook for like a week or so just because I was so overwhelmed with all of the information that was coming in that I, yeah. I at first I was like kind of floored by the whole election, waking up and finding out that he was the president or going to be the president. And then trying to just deal with what that felt like plus with like more information coming in that I just like couldn't take any more information and I had to just mm. um, just sit with the reality of it for a little while and I, I don't think that I've even or can fully articulate what it is that I think is going to happen but I think it's going to be big what I'm imagining will happen in the next but in the next four years is a period of rapid growth and change in our country because of this. I think that we are, because of what's happened, we're all being asked to step up our game and uh, be more outspoken about the things that are happening, maybe not in our communities, but in the communities in the United States, because I am from probably the most liberal <laughs> city in in the United States one of them you know San Francisco and I think I was living in a little bit of a bubble where I thought like I mean I knew that things were changing that were not appropriate in terms of the the second dot com, uh, dot com boom but um, San Francisco is not the reality for a lot of people there are, I mean <laughs> it, it's not it, by any means a a utopia but it is a lot more safe for, for for people than other places in the United States and I think that um, the other cities in, in the country and other places in the country besides cities are going to have to be more vocal or more active about um, speaking out in support or um, getting involved in activism to support other uh, other people and, well, and I think, but, yeah I mean the other thing that is interesting to look at is how the events from the last few weeks and the entire campaign in the US uh, but also in other parts of the world how they've shattered some of the assumptions we like to make even if they're false assumptions like the exactly. assumption that that women will vote progressive have been proven actually quite wrong historically. There's many examples, like Thatcher was a woman, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Le Pen, the Le Pen example in France mm -hmm. is very clear, you know. So, mm -hmm. but in the US, we've, everybody was working with this assumption for a long time. I mean, Clinton's, you know, campaign was in the making for a very long time, you know, and this this assumption that, that um, women will simply vote in this or that way Mm -hmm. uh, was in itself a, a kind of dangerous assumption, you know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and, and perhaps, I'm not saying that anything good will come out of this necessarily, but, but it's certainly one of the things that need to be readjusted is how we've treated and how the political party system has treated certain populations in terms of assuming their vote will be on their side, you know? Um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's really interesting also to realize that a lot of, uh, women who were uneducated or who are uneducated were resentful of, of Hillary's opportunities and her education. And that was something that came out as well. I've been following this and I, the same with you, like it, it's very hard to continue to read all these articles on Facebook that are, people are posting in comments and 
and everything. Um, but I think that, that art can be the opportunity to bridge some of the gap that's happened um, between educated and uneducated women and that there's, there's, there is a huge gap that is um, misunderstood or mis, um, as uh, the concerns of someone who is highly educated versus the current concerns of somebody who has maybe a high school education or less um, are different and and there's a um, even a kind of jealousy that exists that um, that uh, is hard to understand and hasn't been talked about because I think women often don't speak out and uh, and this is now what we're seeing the result of the fact that pe that women haven't been given enough of a voice over time. Um, yeah, and I mean that's and that's the other thing too, right? The class, the the implicated class conversations, and and how even there, like once the 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 law, the more full polling came out post election, it became evident that college educated white men and women actually voted pretty strongly also for for Trump. You know, so. So, because a lot of the campaign rhetoric was that the, the, the white rage came from being abandoned, you know, from being, mm. um, feeling disenfranchised. But that, that explanation doesn't really add up if you, if you look at the, mm. that, that vote did not uh, mm. give the win. You know, it was without the college educated uh, mm. white men and women, you know, and this, this, uh, this the results were just simply not in this way you know um, so and I so one of the questions for example that I've been asking myself this entire week is like what what has gone wrong with college uh, and with with the university system like how how can how can so many people who you know have gone to uh, regardless of the racism or, or homophobia or the sexism how can so many people who have gone through college um, be okay with a president who mostly made things up throughout the campaign? Aren't we aren't we people of knowledge who are supposed to yeah. deal with facts? And you know, it's it's a deeply it's a crisis. Yeah. You know, it's a deep, like it is a crisis. It is a crisis because I mean, in in the United States, there's so much opportunity uh, to even self educate you know to understand things on a, a critical level and it just shows you there's um, you know I mean people you know question the reason for like common core all these different things I mean I don't know maybe it, it is important to have a little bit more commonality between different programs and have uh, to make sure that people get to a level of critical thinking I mean we think that the courses are representing that opportunity but perhaps that's not the case you know people are not learning critical thinking, they're learning maybe how to represent what a teacher desires them to know or, or what a program needs them to know, but not necessarily really using that critical thought, even though they're capable of it, they're not necessarily applying it. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a wake up call, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it's also, I mean, one of the assumptions that yeah. we see every day in most universities that that these conversations yeah. like the one we're having or regardless of partisan positions, you know, basically conversations about yeah. social justice, race, gender, you know, sexuality, they are assumed to belong in the humanities. Mm. And I think this is one of the most pernicious assumptions about the education yeah. system. Like, <laughs> uh, as if economics, like one question I've been asking my, my peers and colleagues uh, at Duke and elsewhere is like, if racism and sexism are not bad for the market, what does that tell us about finance and business? Mm -hmm. mm. Right? Oh, if, that's uh, a really good question. Like Wall asking. Street, the, day, the next day had already embraced, you know, the results of the election. Yeah. And so I actually think what that tells me is that these conversations need to be happening <laughs> in business yes. classes. Absolutely, and, you know, yeah. But yeah, no, that's true. You're you're right. In in all, in all classrooms, not just in the humanities. No, and you're, in the you're sciences correct. too. I mean, the assumption, like if yeah. you're if you're sitting in an engineering class and you only have one or two women in a class of one hundred, isn't that mm. the most urgent place where a conversation of gender needs <laughs> to happen? Even if it's a physics class, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But but it's been it's effectively yeah. not 
incorporated. You know, it's, 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 there's mm. a long history of excluding those very topics and from the places where they're most urgent, you know? Mm. Um, like, yeah. uh, uh, makes a good point. No, that's true. It's very true. Well, Romina well, also added that they just did a strike uh, that was a full hour strike in Argentina where they were uh, showing their anger against the femicides and were, were uh, dressing in black. And uh, there's actually, it's an interesting, rich tradition of women dressed in black and pub showing public mourning, uh, like mm. from a group that is literally called Women in Black, you know, uh, and, uh, mm. Israeli and Palestinian activists were do, but also. Uh, voices in the wilderness during the Iraq invasion, early in the Iraq invasion, was also using some of the, mm -hmm. the dressing in black uh, strategies. But um, it's I, I have to leave in a, in a minute. But um, it's it's not great to end on such a dire set of notes. But <laughs> these are the times. Right? So uh, I did want to say how um, the first lecture that you have in or maybe it's one of the lectures in the first week talks about how um, that in order for people to see public art, like there's a lot of other things that need to happen, like tables need to be set up. And I, I don't remember if, if you re recall saying that, but, uh, or seeing that, but um, you know, there's other things that have to happen in behind the scenes in order for art to be able to actually be seen. There's other stuff that besides just the art itself, right? And I thought that was really encouraging. Um, I think you also, or the person also said that, um, I can't remember which person it was that was talking, said that uh, that's primarily had, has, had been a woman's, a woman's role um, yeah, behind. You know, Shannon the, Jackson, she's a professor at Berkeley. She said, there's a yeah. great chapter in her book on social works that is called Support. Uh, yes. Which is about, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I thought that that was really encouraging because um, not everybody can be the artist, not everybody wants to be the artist, but there are people that do want to support the work so that it is, can get out there and be seen and make an impact. And so that was really encouraging to, yeah. um, to hear. In fact, some things shouldn't be art, right? Or shouldn't be treated like art, you know, mm -hmm. because it does really be <laughs> violence to them, like for Native American, like uh, Jolene Ricard in, the, in, in one of the modules. I don't know if you've gotten there yet, but she's she was one of the curators for the Native American Museum in Washington, but she's a professor mm -hmm. and an artist herself. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important debate amongst Native American and, and you know First Nations people and indigenous populations worldwide. So many of their, their important, you know, Herit objects of heritage have been simply placed in museums without their consultation, you know, like as yeah. uh, treated like art objects, mm. they sh never should have, you know, and but also with activism, yeah. so things can go wrong with something that was meant as an action becomes treated like a fetish, you know, like an artistic fetish, you know, um, mm. yeah. and uh, but yeah, it's uh, but at the same time, yeah, it's, it's important to see this as a big collective effort. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> day, so. uh, I had one the, the conversations just to leave you with um, uh, because if that's okay um, yeah. I had this question because for us working with cloud conversations you know we find that often the people who show up to an event or who listen or who watch there are already people who are leaning in the direction of being aware or open and so then how do you like crack open that uh, the rock or whatever this solid shell that's around things to be able to get people who aren't necessarily interested not aren't open maybe are even on the opposite side how do you get them to actually even have the conversation like be even willing to open up enough to have the conversation um and uh you know what is what is the inside way you know how do you create that in community communities um you know i i've, I've seen some things uh uh actions that people are taking where you know, they're like a uh, Muslim and they're uh, where a woman, she had a sign and she said, I'm, I'm Muslim, I'll have a conversation with you, you know, and I think she had like free cupcakes or something, I don't know, <laughs> but you know, it's like, come have a conversation with me. So, so these kind of ideas, you know, we also need to address in, in the art world and in activism, like, you know, to really reach the people who are, are, are not even open to the dialogue or, um, they're so well, there was um, another example of like, like um, I forget in which campus it was and so many of the violent incidents have happened on campuses ironically mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, the it was in this was like a few days ago. Uh, Muslims in that campus had expressed on social media how they did not feel comfortable praying in oh, the public yeah. places where they're used to praying. Yeah. And so they sent a note, would people join us to mm. feel protected? And they had no idea how many people would come. Hundreds of people came out yeah. to, to basically create a ring of protection. And it's, Yeah, so, I saw that. So yeah, I would that's never a big call this an thing. Art event. I don't think we should call it an art event. It, it would be kind of silly and perhaps you know, stupid to think of this as art. Why does it have to be? It's just a powerful... Yeah public response you know so it is. It is. the way i see it with these things conversation sometimes isn't the, the best place to start conversations yeah. can get deeper you know and so on but but you beginning a conversation about stuff can be so difficult you know uh, mm, especially in yes. times but but yeah. public actions and public gestures especially with those that are not necessarily bombastic i don't think at this time we need bombastic you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. things um, I could le eventually lead to conversation but at the very least they disrupt those division, you know, they, they kind of create yeah. entries and so on. And so. No, you're right. That's true. And then to have follow up events, like other things that happen and come out of that. No, it's, it's true. That's a good point. I did. I also saw that, uh, that that had happened and found that to be something that seems very effective to get people to show solidarity and also maybe get people talking about things and thinking about it in a different way. So, and I also, uh, I mean, I feel point. like, for example, the protests in the big cities in the U.S. are super important because they're they're keeping the movement together. They're people yes. are starting to recognize each other, so they can yeah. bond, so they can build the movement that will be clearly necessary for years to come. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we're making public gestures that are about openings or like conversation, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I feel like as we identify the public spaces where we want our interventions to happen, it's very important to recognize which ones are public in a diverse way and which ones are yeah. preaching to the converted. You know, like yeah, doing yeah. something in New York on the street is is not helping people who feel intimidated in Kansas, you know, or in, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. So, so we need to step out of our comfort zone to enter the yeah. reaching <laughs> public spaces that are not, you know, yeah. um, no, it's a good point. We're used to that's doing work. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. sorry I have to run, but glad no, you were here to join. Thank you so much. And, uh, <laughs> we'll stay in touch. Yeah, thank you Very so much. Very pleasant yeah. surprise. Yeah. I was <laughs> expecting to be like anonymous yeah. in the corner, but thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Thank you. Bye, and, and adios, Bye. adios, Bye -bye. Romina. Yeah. Bye.